All right. So in general, the motion of a rigid object can be quite complicated. If you just imagine picking, picking up some object and, and throwing it through the air, the motion of the object would be quite complicated. It would be following some parabolic path. Its center of mass would be following some parabolic path and the rest of the object would be uh, tumbling, rotating, wobbling, can do a lot of different things. Uh, you can show that no matter how complicated the motion of the object is, it can always be broken up into a couple of simple types of motion. And these are called translation and rotation. So let me just quickly explain what rotation and translation are. So pure rotation is when Pure rotation, uh, so let's start with pure rotation about, about the center of mass. And let's take a disk as our example. So this is the center of the disk. This is a point at the edge of the disk. Uh, pure rotation means that the center is fixed and the object is rotating around the center of mass. So that's what we call pure rotation about the center of mass. So the velocity of the center of mass, so this is pure rotation. The velocity of the center of mass is zero. And all points have the same angular velocity, omega. All points have the same angular velocity, Omega. So that is pure rotation. What is pure translation? Pure translation is when, let's just take the same disk. You have the disk like this. This is a point at the edge. This is a point at the center. If you were to move the disk from here to here without changing its orientation in any way at all, just move the disk. So this point at the edge is still exactly where it was relative to the center. That is called pure translation. So translation means moving an object parallel to itself is what it, uh, always keeping, keeping it parallel to itself. So that is, that is translation. Uh, it has nothing to do with the English meaning of the word translation. It's a mathematical term. So if you're keeping the object parallel to itself, so I'll just write this down. Yeah, and parallel to itself just means you're not changing the orientation of the object at all. You're just moving the object as a whole. So uh, if the velocity of the center of mass, if we call that VCM, uh, if you want to keep the object exactly the same orientation as it was, then every point must have exactly the same velocity, VCM. Uh, so that means that uh, all points on the wheel, I mean the disk, have the same velocity as the center of mass. So all of them have the velocity Vcm and um, the angular velocity about the center of mass what would that be? It would be zero because Relative to the center of mass, the disk does not have any kind of rotation. So that is called pure translation. All right, now in general, an object can have a complicated motion and it could be a combination of rotation and translation. Um, so we are going to look at some combinations of rotation and translation. All right, so let's start with this example on the slide. 
suppose consider this bicycle wheel this wheel is this is actually a motorcycle wheel and not a bicycle wheel but anyway it doesn't matter so consider this wheel and let's say that the wheel is rotating for some reason it's rotating very very fast it's standing on the ground the, re the red line is the ground here and let's say that the wheel is rotating very fast and at the same time it's just moving to the right very slowly right so what would be going on at the bottom of the wheel where it's touching the road clearly the wheel will be scraping against the road right the, the wheel will be uh, th there would be relative motion between the bottom of the wheel and the road right and so there would be some kinetic friction between the bottom of the wheel and the road right so the point in contact with the ground would be sliding against the ground that's the most important thing to realize in this case and this is an example of rolling with sliding rolling with sliding is sometimes also called rolling with slipping so you use the word slipping instead of sliding it's more commonly called rolling with uh, slipping. So an example of rolling with slipping is when the wheel is rotating really fast, but it's moving uh, relative to the ground rather slowly. Right? One example, one real life example of that is when you are uh, spinning the wheels of a car, right? So when you're spinning the wheels of a car, uh, you press down on the accelerator and that makes the wheel spin really fast but you keep your foot on the brake so the car cannot move horizontally very fast and so the wheel has to just spin in place while scraping against the road uh, and so there's a lot of friction between the wheel and the road and that causes that squealing sound uh, so that's an example of rolling with slipping Okay, another, ex another example of rolling with slipping is the opposite scenario where just imagine that the wheel is moving very, wheel is being dragged very fast along the ground, but it's not being allowed to rotate as much as it, want, uh, as much, as much as it normally would. So you're just dragging the wheel along, but you are not letting it rotate. Uh, you might have seen this example when if you're sitting on a rolling rolly chair, and uh, let's say that one of the wheels at the bottom of the chair uh, has is locked and then when you try to roll the chair uh, you you hear this scraping uh, you see this scraping against the ground that wheel sc scraping against the ground uh, why because it's not able to roll and so again that's an example of rolling uh, with slipping i'm assuming assuming that the wheel can roll a little bit so that's an example of rolling with slipping okay so what is rolling without slipping then? Rolling without slipping is what happens when if you were to uh, drag this wheel along and uh, just let it roll naturally, right? So you let's imagine that you put a stick through the middle of the wheel and make it act like an axle and then you move the stick horizontally and just let the wheel uh, roll along and you are uh not restricting the wheel in any way you're just let just letting it roll along so that's the most natural uh form of rolling that you can imagine so in that case there would not be any slippage or any sliding uh, between the wheel and the ground right so the point of the wheel that's instantaneously in touch with the ground would be momentarily at rest and so uh that is what we call rolling without slipping all right there's a, a nice uh, simulation video over here uh, which we can take a look and i would recommend taking a look at this video yourself okay so this is what we just discussed it's uh, pure translation right so the wheel is not changing its orientation at all it's just pure translation Okay, so I don't know exactly where the uh, uh, bookmarks are <laughs> for this, so I haven't made books, bookmarks, so uh, we'll just have to watch the whole thing. Uh, this is pure rotation, so the wheel is rotating and its center of mass is at rest and everything is rotating relative to the center of mass. So, um, 
linear velocity of the center of mass is zero, but the angular velocity is not zero. So that is pure, pure rotation. Okay. This is rolling without slipping. Notice the, the white curve here gives you the location of one point of the wheel. Notice that one point of the wheel just keeps uh, uh, just keeps going up and down. And uh, so this is rolling without slipping. And here are some examples of rolling. Uh, this is still rolling without slipping. Okay, so we are still rolling without slipping. Interestingly, the curve traced out by the wheel, uh, by that point of the wheel is called a cycloid when it was rolling without slipping. Anyway, so now we are rolling faster than uh, rolling with, uh, with, without slipping. So in this case, as you can see, uh, a point on the wheel will scrape against the ground, right? So there's a, there will be friction between point on the wheel and the ground because the wheel is uh, rolling uh, a little faster than it would normally roll. And here again, the wheel is rotating too fast. And so there is a, there's slippage between the wheel and the ground. So these are all examples of the various scenarios we talked about. So please make sure that you understand all of these. Okay, now let's look at one thing. Suppose you have a disk and the disk is doing both. It is rolling, uh, it is spinning and at the same time the center of mass of the disk is moving with some velocity Vcm. I want to find out what is the velocity of any point on the um, rim or the edge of the disk. What is the total velocity relative to the ground of any point uh, on the rim of the disk? So the disk is rotating with some angular velocity omega and the center of mass of the disk is moving with some velocity Vcm. So I want to find out the velocity of this point, right? So that's not hard to do at all. Um, let's call the... Uh, okay, so to, to find the velocity of the point on the edge, we can proceed as follows. This point has two velocities, right? Okay, let me just draw this picture over here. So what we have here is a disk which is moving along the velocity of the center of mass of the disk is vcm and at the same time it's also spinning let's say this it's spinning clockwise and i want to find out the velocity of a point on the edge of the disk let's just call this the point p and let's call this the point o i want to find the velocity of the point p relative to somebody on the ground and the disk is spinning with some angular velocity omega right so how do we do this? So what we can do is we can uh, note that the point P has two different velocities. One of them is due to the fact that the entire disk is moving, right? So it, one velocity that the point P has is the velocity of the center of mass. That's one contribution to its velocity. It also has another velocity. Can you tell me what that other velocity is? So if you forget about the fact that the disk is uh, moving, if you just think about the fact that the disk is rotating, then it has a, then the point P has a tangential velocity, right? Because it's rotating about the point O. So that tangential velocity I can draw, that would be in the tangential direction. So that is the tangential velocity of the disk about the center of mass. So I'm just being very pedantic and writing V tangential 
relative to the center of mass. Right? And so what is the total velocity of the uh, disk? It's going to be the vector sum of these two velocities because it's got two velocities. So these are being vector added to find the total velocity. So what is the total velocity of the point P? It would be velocity of the center of mass plus velocity of the tangential, uh, tangential velocity of that point relative to the center of mass. And this is the formula that we have on uh, the slide. Okay, this might seem a, a bit abstract to you if you're learning this for the first time. So let's look at an example uh, which illustrates this. And then you'll see that it's, the idea is pretty trivial. So the example is on the next slide. So we the example, say, example is, a circular wall clock has been flung out of the window and is flying horizontally while oriented in the vertical plane, right? So it's exactly what we talked about, except that this time it's a clock. Uh, so it's imagine that the clock is vertical and it's spinning and it's flying uh, with some velocity, VCM. So we have to find, so what we're given is the uh, velocity of the clock, that's capital V, and we, and we are given the radius of the clock, and we have to find the, the, uh, the total velocity of a few points marked on the clock. So let's, let's give it a try. So here's our clock. This is the 12 o'clock point. This is the three o'clock point. This is the six o'clock point. Okay. So let's see if we can find the velocity of the 12 o'clock point. Remember that the clock itself as a whole is moving with some velocity capital V. That's the velocity of the clock and the clock has a radius R. Okay, now let's find the velocity of the 12 o'clock point. So the 12 o'clock point has two velocities. One comes from the fact that the whole thing is moving with velocity v. So one velocity is just the velocity v. Another velocity that it has is its tangential velocity relative to its center, right? What is the direction of the 12's tangential velocity relative to the center? The answer is, it's just gonna be in the tangential direction. So it's V tangential would also be in this direction. And we just saw that the total velocity would be the vector sum of these two. So these are both going to be in the same direction. So we can write V, okay. So we're just gonna use our equation right here. V total, would be V center of mass. I'll just write this again, V tangential center of mass. And I'm just gonna use strict vector notation. I'll just assume that there is a X axis pointing to the right and a Y axis pointing upwards. So uh, the velocity of the center of mass would be I hat multiplied by V. And the velocity, the tangential velocity relative to the center of mass would be also I hat multiplied by v, tan, uh, v tangential because they're both in the I hat x direction. And what is V tangential? It's just gonna be R omega. So it's gonna be I hat V plus I hat R times omega. So it's I hat V plus R omega. That's the total velocity of the 12 o'clock point. I'll just write that as V12 for short. Can you do V3? The total velocity of the three o'clock point, let's just look at both its velocities. So it has one velocity in the tangential direction and it has another velocity
in the what is the direction i'm sorry the it has one velocity in the same direction as the center of mass that's the one that i just drew that that's the v and it also has a tangential velocity what's the direction of its tangential velocity clearly the direction of the tangential velocity would be like this and the tangential velocity is always r omega so a v3 would be uh, i hat v minus j hat because the tangential velocity is in the negative j direction v tangential so that's going to be i hat v minus j hat r omega and this cannot be simplified any further so that's that's what it is now the most important example for our purposes for what comes next is the velocity of the six o'clock point so let's calculate that velocity of the uh, velocity of the six o'clock point would be uh, so the six o'clock point has again same thing it, it's got two velocities one is the velocity uh, that it has from, from its mo motion as a whole so that's the velocity of the center of mass and the other is its tangential velocity now if the disk is spinning clockwise what is the direction of its tangential velocity the answer is it's uh, backwards right so the tangential velocity will be in this direction and so you can write the um, velocity vector for the six o'clock point as follows uh, it's, it will be i hat uh, v minus i hat v tangential so that's i hat v minus r omega and that's the velocity of the six o'clock point the velocity of the four o'clock point which i have marked optional on the slide is very similar uh, you can just uh, uh, figure it out yourself okay all right so now let's look at rolling without slipping so hopefully you have a clear idea of what rolling without slipping is so that is the case when an when a when some disc or wheel or, or sphere anything that can roll is rolling along the ground but there is no slipping or sliding between the bottom of the object and the ground right so that is the most common type of rolling uh, that you see if you just roll a ball it will roll without slipping unless the ground is extremely slippery in which case it might uh, slide against the ground for a while before it catches and then starts rolling without slipping uh, so rolling without slipping is when the uh, point at the bottom of the object is momentarily at rest relative to the ground so the only type of friction is static friction there is no kinetic friction kinetic friction only happens when the two surfaces are moving relative to each other and there is sliding uh, between the surfaces one of them is sliding or slipping against the other so rolling without slipping is when there is no um, kinetic friction and the point at the bottom the point in contact with the ground uh, remains at rest remains momentarily at rest okay so what is the velocity suppose this object is rolling with angular velocity omega and the center of mass of the object is moving with the velocity vcm the radius of the object let's say is r in general what is the velocity of the bottom point of this object that is exactly what we just calculated it's the in our clock the bottom point was the six o'clock point and the velocity of the bottom point was uh, v minus r omega the magnitude of the velocity was v minus r omega so uh, v in this case is vcm as it was in the case of the clock we just called it v 
uh, in the in that example so the velocity of the bottom point or i should say the velocity of the point in contact with the ground what we just calculated earlier which is, and that's v cm minus r omega right now we just mentioned how the definition of rolling without slipping is that the velocity of the point in contact with the ground has to be zero so we conclude that vcm minus r omega is equal to zero and so from there we immediately get the very important condition for rolling without slipping vcm is equal to r omega remember that this is only true when the object is rolling without slipping now i'll just point out one other thing here this formula that we just derived for rolling without slipping has a superficial similarity to a formula that we had seen in chapter 9 which was the tangential velocity formula v tangential equals r omega uh, this formula uh, was used in deriving uh, the vcm equals r omega formula but they are completely different uh, formulas because v tangential and v center of mass are not the same thing at all so what is this vcm equals r omega telling us it's telling us that when an object is rolling without slipping like this wheel that i have here uh, if it really is rolling without slipping then there is a relationship between the rate at which it's rotating omega and how fast it's moving there's a definite relationship between those two and that relationship is velocity of the center of mass equals radius multiplied by the angular velocity of rotation of that object okay so this is going to be an extremely important formula for the next couple of slides uh, and please remember that this formula only applies when the object is rolling without slipping it's not generally true all right so let's look at an example problem so um, uh, let's look at this example So uh, see if you can figure this one out. This would have been a top hat question in class. Uh, see if you can figure this one out. And um, if not, uh, you can, and, and after you've come up with an answer, you can look at how I, how I approach it. Okay, so you've got a solid sphere that's rolling without slipping on a horizontal surface. Uh, you're considering three points on the sphere. Uh, point A is at the center. Uh, o is the center, sorry. A is directly above the center. And B is the point at the bottom in touch with the ground. Okay, uh, you're given the, the speed of O. So that's the velocity of the center of mass, obviously, and we're calling that V. So the question is, what is the speed of point A and what is the speed of point B? The correct answer is the speed of point B is zero. Can you tell me why? The reason is because we are told that it's rolling without slipping. And the definition of rolling without slipping is that the velocity of the point that's in touch momentarily in touch with the ground uh, is zero. And that's why there is no slipping or sliding because the point that's in touch with the ground at that moment is at rest. So velocity of the bottom point is zero, Vp is equal to zero. Uh, what about Va? So to find the velocity of the point A, what we are going to do is we will use the relationship that we had derived earlier. So just think about it, think about that problem with the clock uh, the velocity at A is basically the velocity of the 12 o'clock point, right? We've already derived that. The velocity of the 12 o'clock point was V plus R omega. So it's velocity of the center of mass plus R omega, which is in, in this case, it's just V 
plus r omega right but we do know something about r omega we know that v center of mass is also equal to r omega and that is because we are told that it's rolling without slipping so from here you can see that um, you can get rid of the you, you can replace r omega by v or vcm they, they mean the same thing here so v plus v so this is 2v so that means a point at the top will have a velocity twice as a point at the top will be moving twice as fast as a point at the center and a point in touch with the ground would have zero velocity so we note that we are only talking about instantaneous velocities right the point that's in touch with the ground right now the next moment it would be up somewhere over here and then it will have some velocity but uh, at at the moment that it's touching the ground its velocity is zero just for that moment okay all right So I have a, um, I would recommend that you try the example on slide 22 uh, yourself. It, it's fully worked out on the slide. Okay, there is a very important relationship which we are going to just state without proof. We are not going to get into the proof of that. The proof of that is uh, beyond the scope of uh, this elementary course, but it's a very beautiful proof. It. If any of you major in physics, you will you might encounter it. Suppose you have some object that is executing some complicated motion. So suppose you have like this uh, rectangular object, you've thrown this object and it's uh, it might be spinning and at the same time it might be moving along. You can prove that the kinetic energy of this object can be written no matter how complicated its motion is, it, you can, its kinetic energy would be um, k is equal to it, there will be two parts to its kinetic energy. One is the kinetic energy due to translation. So let's say that this is the center of mass of the object and the center of mass is moving with velocity Vcm. The kinetic energy would be half m Vcm square plus a half i omega square. W what is this i? The i is the moment of inertia of the object relative to its center of mass. So half I C M omega square. And that would be, and, and omega is the angular velocity with which the object is rotating about its center of mass. So the formula for the total kinetic energy of an object that's uh, executing translational and rotational motion. Uh, the kinetic energy has two parts. One is the translational part that's due to translation and that is exactly what you would expect for a point mass moving of mass m moving with velocity vcm so it's half m vcm square and then you have a part that is due to rotation so this is called translational ke and this is called rotational ke and uh, the I that you use for rotational kinetic energy is the moment of inertia about an axis which is passing through the center of mass of the object. And omega is the angular velocity with which the object is rotating about its uh, about that axis through the center of mass. Let's look at one example of that. Suppose you, you have, uh, I think I have a very similar example on the next slide. I'll let you try that on your own, but I'm going to do, I'm, I'm just going to make one up, make another one up. So suppose you have a disk of mass m, radius r, and let's say that disk is rolling along the ground, it's rolling without slipping, and its uh, velocity of its, uh, of its center of mass is vcm. So if you're following the center of this disk, it's moving with velocity Vcm. The question is, what is the kinetic energy of the disk? So the kinetic energy of the disk would have a translational part and a rotational part.
the translational part is just half m vcm square so that's easy we already have that the rotational part would be half i about an axis passing through the center of mass of the disc so that would mean an axis parallel to the disc uh, axis perpendicular to the disc passing through the center of the disc so icm omega square right so let's work out the second term here there's nothing to do with the first term one half mvcm square plus one half icm for a disc is half mr square what about omega so omega is the rate at which the disc is spinning about its center of mass right we are given one piece of information which allows us to figure out what the omega is which is that the disc is rolling without slipping now that we could not have used that equation if the disc was not rolling without slipping in that case the answer would just be one half i omega square there's not much we can there's no connection between vcm and omega but if the disc is rolling without slipping there's an extra relationship that we can use what is that relationship vcm equals r omega so we can plug that in over here and we can write and then we can just simplify a little bit so omega is vcm divided by r squared and now we can just simplify this one half m vcm square plus uh, one fourth m r square vcm square divided by r square the r squares cancel out and then this becomes one half plus one fourth is three fourths m vcm square is the kinetic energy of this disk as it's rolling